My name is Susie Hendricks, and I'm, well, I've been living in Memphis, Tennessee since 1968, and I was born in, in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. I moved to New York in the late 70s, and I lived there for a while. I was modeling there, and I moved to Japan, and then I moved to France to audition for a band there, and I was going to stay for a couple weeks, and I stayed 10 years. I wanna dance with you. Moved back here, I was going to stay for six months, and that was about 12 years ago. I study music in college. I don't have any kind of art education at all. My education is really travel. That's my, what my muse is. My muse is travel. I was a model in Japan when, and I, um, I saw a little soprano saxophone in the store window and thought, oh my, that's cute. I'll buy it. And <laughs> that was about 1979 or 1980, somewhere around there. And um, I've been playing on and off since then. I traveled with a Japanese pop band called um, Takahashi Yukihiro, and then I toured with a French um, avant-garde performance art band, and we traveled all over Europe. I used to hang from tall buildings and play saxophone, cranes and things like that, and church towers. I used to jump out of church towers and play saxophone. And it was really fun. It was a great time. One day I was sitting in um, Chartres Cathedral waiting for the show to start and the light was shining through the church windows and I wouldn't say I had a, a religious experience, it was more of a, a religious experience. <laughs> I had an epiphany and, um, and then the next day I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> but when I moved to Memphis, I was playing saxophones and I was ending up playing in bars and casinos and I didn't really like that lifestyle. And glass just seemed something that I could do for a living as well as be creative. I took some classes at a local shop in town and they told me I'd never get a job doing glass, but um, I pretty easily got a job <laughs> doing glass. And I, from there, the company that I worked for gave me hands-on training to learn how to do hot glass and kiln form glass. So I got to do a lot of research and development at Rainbow Studio, which was really nice. I think glass is, is versatile because you get light coming through it and you get light bouncing off of it and you can play with that and do a lot of things. I tend to focus on what's called decorative art. I do a lot of stained glass windows, mosaics, I do vessels and things like that. When you paint on glass, the, the paint is actually made out of crushed up glass and lead and cadmium and all that bad stuff. but it, it just turns into powder once it dries. So you paint it on and then you fire it in a kiln at 1250 degrees and that makes the glass paint just melt right into the glass and it's permanent. It's the exact same technique that's been used for centuries. Just I think it's kind of cool. You got My favorite part about being an artist I feel like part of me doesn't really have to grow up. <laughs> it's kind of like being a kid. It's kind of like when you see kids, they just kind of naturally do stuff with stuff. And it's kind of like that. <laughs> Mayor Wharton actually pointed this out in reference to putting art in kind of rougher neighborhoods is that if children don't see beauty, they don't know it exists. And that really struck me as something, you know, very important because if you don't see art, you don't really know it's there. If you don't see something beautiful, your life is a little less rich. I think everybody has an artist side, even if they don't know it. I think it's there. I think we all have that potential to be creative. It's just whether we choose to tap into it or not. I think that's really important. You gotta work, work, work.